In today's video, we're gonna talk about electrical safety for beginners, because if you mess up even one time, you can die forever. And it's invisible, it can hurt before you die, and it's everywhere. So if you know what you're doing, you'll never get hurt, but you need to know the rules. So we're gonna go over a bunch of tips and tricks that I use to not die. And I wrote down a ton of rules for beginners, but first let's talk about a common myth. A lot of old guys will say it's not the voltage that kills you, it's the amperage. And technically they are true, the severity of the damage to your organs, if you're gonna die or not, is dependent on the current. But current cannot flow if the voltage is not high enough to overcome the resistance of your skin. If the electricity cannot go inside of you, then it's not going to hurt you. For example, a car battery is only 12 volts. It can deliver thousands of amps. It could kill a hundred elephants, but it doesn't deliver enough voltage to overcome the resistance value of my skin to allow current to flow inside of me to cause damage. So for most people, you shouldn't even be thinking about the amperage because there's enough amperage to kill you everywhere. You should only be thinking about the voltage. And OSHA and NEC say that any voltage over 50 volts AC or DC is dangerous. It would be very hard to die with that voltage, but it's still technically possible. Now keep in mind, even under 50 volts, you can still get shocked in some instances. For example, when your skin is wet. Typically when your skin is dry, the electrical resistance is very high and it makes it very hard to get shocked. But if your hands are sweaty or they're wet, it will actually allow current to flow easily. That's why sometimes when you're working with a 12 or 24 volt battery, you can put your hand across it and if it's very sweaty because you've been working on the system, you can actually feel a tingle. That tingle will not hurt you, but you're still getting shocked. Now let's talk about what electricity does to various organs. And the most important organ is your heart. Inside it's controlled with its own electrical system and you can disrupt it when you get shocked from an external source. And this is why it's so dangerous to get shocked across your hands. Because if current can flow through your arms and then through your chest and then through your heart, it can kill you instantly and it doesn't take that much current to kill you. That's what those old guys are talking about when they say it's not the voltage, it's the current, because it doesn't take that much current to disrupt your heart's signaling system. Next is muscles. Your muscles actually have calcium to control their contraction, and when you get electrocuted, it actually releases that calcium, and it causes them to contract excessively. It can contract so hard that it can tear itself, it can tear the tendons, and it can even tear the bone. The bone is actually weaker than in your tendons. Bone is just a crystal of calcium with a matrix of collagen fibers throughout. And those collagen fibers are actually continuous with the tendon. So when you rip it off, it's because the tendon is really strong and it's breaking a chunk out of that bone that's weaker than the tendon. In some instances, you can even have a dislocation of a joint if the muscle that it attaches to on one side is putting it into an unfavorable or unstable position and then it can pop out of place. In this instance, you're gonna have joint capsule damage so the ligaments that surround your joint are gonna be ripped apart. Also, if your breathing muscles are being electrocuted, you cannot breathe because they're convulsating now. Now, it really depends on which muscle and where and how much you're getting electrocuted, but realize that your muscles are everywhere, and when they get electrocuted, they convulse. Now, the scariest muscle convulsion is with your hands because it can make everything worse. If you're getting shocked by something that you're grabbing and you get that convulsion, it will cause you to grab onto it harder. And the longer you get shocked, the more damage occurs. In this instance, you have to have something or somebody push you off of it, and it has to be insulated because you don't want them getting shocked as well. So typically with a pole or a stick, you push them off of the thing that's electrocuting them. Now some old guys that understand this will use the back of their hand to test for voltage. They know this because they don't want the convulsion on the flexors, but if they get the back, it's not a big deal really. Like even if the electricity flows and it causes the flexors to do this because it's a larger muscle group, it's going to push them away from whatever they're testing. So they'll just do it right here, which is not recommended. I'm never gonna do that, super dangerous, but sometimes you'll see the old electricians doing that. Also, this is why old electricians always use one hand when they're prodding around. They never use two hands because you can take a pretty good shock in other places of your body, but if you take a shock through your hands and it goes through your heart, you're dead. But if you have one arm and you're getting shocked from your finger down to your 
your elbow, it will hurt and it can cause lots of damage to multiple organ systems, but you're not gonna die. But that leads me to the next thing and that's internal burns. So when you have electricity flowing through here and that can cause permanent damage, it can cause nerve damage, it can cause muscle damage, all sorts of stuff. Also, if electricity flows through an organ, you can have internal burns through your organs. Now keep in mind your organs are bags of water. If you have a lot of current going through there and it generates a lot of heat inside of you, it can cause it to explode. That would take a lot, but it's possible. You are just a big bag of salt water. If you pump a lot of electrons through it, there's resistance internally and it's gonna give off heat. Now, if electricity goes through your brain or through your eyes, it can cause blindness, it can cause a traumatic brain injury, all sorts of issues. Pretty much every organ system is negatively affected by electricity. Now, so far, we've only talked about the damage of electricity when it goes through your body, but there's something else that's probably more scarier, and that's called an arc blast. This is a literal explosion caused by an electrical fault. So for example, let's say we have a high voltage battery and it's very large and you have large conductors supplying it and you cause a dead short somehow. The amount of energy released in that space will create an explosion that's so powerful that it will generate pressure waves and it can throw people back. Also, it'll create so much light that everything around you is burned, including yourself. You can get second and third degree burns anywhere that light touches. Next, the temperature is so extreme that any copper nearby will become vaporized and you can actually breathe it and get copper in your lungs. Next, if surrounding metals do not become vaporized, they become shrapnel and it literally explodes in every direction. Also, anybody looking at this without protective equipment is gonna be blind. And there's pictures of people affected by arc flash and I wouldn't look them up. They're pretty darn bad. They still haunt me to this day. Think of it as a bomb going off in your face and it doesn't have to be some crazy thing like a grid substation or a massive battery. It can actually happen with the bus bars on a residential panel. If you were to cause a massive short and your neighborhood's transformer pushes all that energy into that one little spot, it's enough to create an explosion. And those things haunt me in my dreams. I can be very careful with everything else, but that, like an arc flash, ooh, that is a bomb going off in your face. Now that we have all of that stuff out of the way, we can talk about my tips and tricks so you don't die. So let's get started. First, always check voltage before you touch anything. Even if you know that you turned it off, you wanna check with a multimeter. This is the safest way to test if there's voltage in a circuit, and you can see exactly how much voltage is present. You can also buy these non-contact things, but I never seem to trust these. You put them on an outlet or a wire and it tells you if there's voltage present. But I like to test it manually to see if anything's actually there. Now with AC power, it's very simple. You shut off the breaker, there's no more power, you test, it shows zero volts, and then you work on it. But when you're working with things like batteries, you cannot turn them off. Some of the new 48 volt batteries you can turn off, but old lead acid batteries, small 12 volt batteries, there's no on and off switch. So when you work with those devices, you have to connect those last. You won't believe how many people will connect an inverter to a battery and then they'll try to wire up some other thing while it's still connected. That is wrong. Or connecting leads to the battery and having them float around and then connecting them one by one. Do not do that. Build your system, connect the batteries last. Next, you need safety glasses and you need to wear them. Anytime you even touch a battery, put these safety glasses on. Also, if you're working with drilling steel and also concrete dust, get one of these because these safety glasses do not protect from stuff coming in from the side. This thing does, it seals to your face and I wear this thing all the time when I'm not on camera or when I'm on camera, when I'm cutting through the cases now, this thing is fantastic. Next, you should use insulated tools, especially for batteries. These prevent short circuits and this especially applies inside electrical devices. Do not use one of these. This is a massive conductor. This will cause problems. And Harbor Freight even has these for cheap now, so there's no excuse not to use these. Next, at all times when you work with electrical devices, especially batteries or solar strings, you need to be aware of what you're doing. Do not be playing music. Do not have people around you talking, asking you stupid questions. You need to be focused. There is a certain mode that I go into when I'm around dangerous electrical devices so that I do not die. 
die. Also, do not work if you're tired. If you've been working all day long and you have to work with some solar strings, just forget it. Wait till the next day. Next, if you have an off-grid system and you have a frame for a solar array and it starts buzzing, whenever you hear a buzzing sound and you don't know what it's from and it just started out of nowhere, there's a problem. Do not touch anything, especially the case of anything, and turn everything off and then inspect everything with your eyes visually to see if there's any physical damage. Maybe a wire is touching a case or one of the solar panels is damaged. If you're having a hard time finding it, turn things on one by one to figure out what it is and then inspect it more. But if you hear that buzzing, do not touch it. Next, even if you're working with a low voltage, things can still shock you and it can be pretty painful. For example, coils. If you're working with a large relay and there's a coil inside and it's charged up or a large charged up capacitor, you're gonna get shocked. And some of those can have a very high voltage and it's very painful. Some capacitors can kill you. Now, if you're working with something dangerous like a microwave or a power supply, don't touch anything unless you're a professional because there's things in there that can actually kill you. So leave that stuff to the professional but realize even if you're working with low voltage in a car, those coil packs can still get you and it hurts a lot. Now when it comes to off-grid solar, the most dangerous part of your system is the solar string or the high voltage DC current that can come from your solar panels. In solar panels, you cannot turn them off. It's kind of like a battery and that makes it very, very dangerous. So when you're working with them, you want to use solar disconnects. You want to work at night. You don't want to disconnect or connect anything when there's power flowing because you can create an arc or you can you can die. I mean, that's a lot of DC and it can cause that convulsion and it can really get you. So I have a whole other video talking about that and the safety procedure. So yeah, check out that video. Next, if you don't have a multimeter on you, but you really want to work on something, wait until you have one. That's just a rule I've always had. I am deathly scared of electricity. I've been shocked pretty bad when I was a little kid because I was obsessed with electricity. So I've learned to always use this. If I don't have this, I will not touch anything. I don't care how many times I turned everything off. I want to see it off with this. Next, low voltage things might not have a shock hazard, but they can generate a lot of heat and that can burn you. Bad connections on a battery terminal, bad connections to an inverter, they can get crazy hot and burn the heck out of your skin, so be careful. Now, even if you know that something is completely turned off, still try to use one hand. When I'm in my electrical mode and I'm going through a battery or something, I'm using one hand. Even if everything is turned off, I'm not putting both hands in there. That's just not smart. And that's with everything. Even if I'm tightening down a battery terminal, I do it with one hand only. I just have gotten used to doing that. Next, some things can poke you and shock you. So if you're working on circuit boards, if a spiky piece of solder goes into your skin and goes into your blood, it will allow electricity to flow. All that electrical resistance of your skin is gone. So be careful of what you're touching and what it looks like. You don't wanna to just touch everything. Everything you touch in an electrical device, you need to think about before you do it. Next, I've burned my eyeballs in a lot of ways from electrical projects, solder and other things. I've gotten a lot of things in my eyes have an eye wash station or an eye rinse cup or something. I've gotten really good at just taking water and just going like crazy like this. And they'll be sore for a few days if you burn them and you should always check with a doctor, but be good at rinsing out your eyes because if you work in this, you're eventually gonna have to do it. Next, take off all jewelry. Do not wear any rings or necklaces or any of that. If you have a dead short across a ring, a lot of guys will freak out and they'll pull it off and it pulls off all of the skin. Do not look up pictures of it because they are online. But yeah, very scary, no jewelry ever. Next, always inspect your systems. Look at the wires, look if there's any fraying, if anything's getting worn out. If something's loose, it will generate heat and it can melt itself and it can cause a short to the case or something else. So always inspect everything around you. Everything should be clean and tidy and nice. A lot of dangerous things happen slowly over time and people just didn't notice it. Especially extension cords, check them, look at them, make sure it's not cut open. Next, whenever you work with electricity, it should be in a dry environment. Do not have moisture around. Do not have some like wet, damp carpet or wall connected or next to an off-grid solar power system. Everything around where you work needs to be dry. Next, batteries are dangerous no matter what. Even if it's a small one or a large one, even if it's low voltage or high voltage, they store energy. Regardless of how they do it, no matter how safe a chemistry is, 
all batteries are dangerous. Even if you have a cell phone battery and it's very small and it's just like a couple volt volts, it doesn't matter because if that thing gets physically damaged and it reacts with oxygen and causes a thermal runaway, the temperatures it can generate are extremely dangerous. And some of those batteries are really tiny, but they're still dangerous. Be careful when you work around batteries, especially with those small batteries. If you short circuit them, they can explode. I've had that with lithium polymer pouch cells. Those are very dangerous. Same with lead acids. Those things can explode as well. And they have no safety features. There's no BMS. They're very scary. Now, if you ever have to work with a live circuit, which again, I do not recommend, but there are instances where you have to, and you just have to find a way to make it work. You really have to think about what you're doing and plan accordingly. There's certain ways where certain electricians, they will do all the wiring and connect it to the breaker, and then they'll connect it to the panel last. So they're not working with live electricity. Or you work with one conductor at a time, you use the proper protective gear, and you're very careful. Most beginners will never have to deal with that, but if you're ever in that situation, think about what you're doing and try to make it so that it's not live when you're working on it, even if it seems like it has to be. Next, never become comfortable with electricity. A lot of electricians, they'll be like, oh, I've been doing this for 50 years, I'm totally fine. I don't care. They've been shocked a bunch and some of those guys are not good at what they do, all right? Never feel comfortable with the electricity. You need to be 100% focused and smart and follow the protocol. Some people won't believe me, but I just watched a video of an electrician that's been working for years and years in commercial and he got this crazy arc blast. So yeah, you have to be focused even if you've been doing this for a long time. Electricity does not care about your feelings or your experience or how confident you are. It only cares about how how smart you are. So thank you so much for watching. I think I covered most of it. I could keep talking forever about this. So I hope you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. If you have any more comments or tricks that you want to share below, please let me know and I will see you in the next video. Bye.